I'm Dr. Christopher Lucio. I'm a neurologist at the University of Wisconsin. Um, I specialize in multiple sclerosis. I teach a class called uh, Design for Rehabilitation. So it's a project class. The students are assigned a project, specifically something that will help somebody who's disabled. I acquire ideas for new projects by meeting various people, for example, in my clinic, or people that are sent to me by other doctors. So I take ideas that I garnish from meeting these patients, ideas for things that could help them that are unique, that you can't purchase in the real world. And I take those back to my students, and teams of students, ranging from two to four students, are assigned a project, they design a device, uh, and then fabricate it. But before they even get into the design process, they'll meet the client, they'll meet the person that it's specifically for, and then they, they do the work. And hopefully along the way, I give them some guidance. <laughs> I'm Doug Powell. I'm David Luzio. And I'm Felix Tisha. We are the guitar project team. Uh, we are part of Christopher Luzio's design class. Specifically, the device that we're trying to build is an attachment <coughs> to the neck of a guitar in order to uh, press the strings down onto the top three or four frets. This is my son. He's, uh, let's see, he gets to be a victim this semester. <laughs> I mean, that's not an inaccurate description. <laughs> Having my dad as a professor, <laughs> first of all, it, it's a little weird because, you know, I kind of feel a little singled out just inherently. Um, but I warmed up to it, and, you know, I, now that I'm in college, I don't see my dad as much as I used to, and it's, it's nice to reconnect with them, even if it's on kind of a different basis than I'm used to. Um, and, you know, I enjoy the lectures, and I enjoy the demonstrations and the people that he brings in. Um, it kind of makes me feel proud of who I am and where I come from, just to see him talking about his own work. Actually, not as peculiar as I thought it might be. I treat him like the other students. Um, I've been working with students for so many years that uh, you know, when he walks in the room, I see him as a student, not as my son. Uh, it's a little funny and odd when he calls me dad in the little class, but that's all right. There's a girl that my father met during a fundraiser, and she doesn't have like real ability to use one of her arms and her hand, and so she can't pick guitar chords, uh, and so that's just one example. We're trying to build a device where she can interface another part of her body to the guitar, and so you know now she can do something that she loves to do, and that's what this is all about. Uh, we're going to the Went Library uh, to work on some of our 3D printing. I think with the resin that we're going to be printing, it's probably going to be a seven, eight hour process. Um, but I can't tell you for sure. I'm no expert on 3D printing, unfortunately. Um, but usually I like to leave it in overnight, just come back the next morning. So far, a big challenge that we've run into is uh, a lot of the 3D printing that we've done is flawed. Uh, so the first round that we 3D printed, the software didn't detect a lot of features in our models, and so it didn't print them correctly. They didn't have holes where they needed holes. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, and the, uh, the second round, uh, you know, all the geometry was where it should have been, except that it was a little melty looking, just because we had changed the uh, method of 3D printing. Um, and so, we've had some issues with fabrication, basically. Uh, but we're, we're getting towards our prototype pretty quickly. Uh, right now we're in the team lab down in ECB, kind of the whole machine shop where all the engineers come to work. Uh, right now we're going to go drill out those cams over here on these drill presses and uh, then we're going to sand over some uh, brass tubing that we're going to insert in them just to act as bearings uh, for the rods that they'll pivot on. Uh, the cams are little lever arms that are pressing on our guitar strings. 
uh, we just 3D printed them again. I think we're all frustrated by the fact that we had to 3D print. <laughs> Especially Doug. You have to be creative in order to create things. As obvious as that sounds, it's right. <laughs> the sort of creativity that I think engineers tend to have is not just like a purely artistic creativity, it's more of a, a functional creativity a yeah. lot of the time. We have to keep in mind the, uh, the actual boundaries of the technology and how we're going to implement things from a lot of different perspectives. Creativity is what separates humans from the rest of the animal world. It allows us to create things that don't exist in nature, things that serve a purpose from basic materials you find in the environment or materials that we make. Creativity is that process of taking basically things that have no obvious function and creating devices software and electronics that serve a purpose is thinking beyond what you see in front of you that's creativity we just um, yeah kind of expanded our prototype by not using one servo but having six servo motors and servo arms which uh, when you see in the prototype we had a fork and the cams pressing down on the different um, threads for one string now we have six strings with six servos, who each have a fork, each have uh, three cams, and um, that's what the whole like final design upper part looks like, because we need to print these forks. Uh, the cams are just getting printed, and yeah, so basically how it works is just like watching the video of the prototype <laughs> and multiplying it by six. For me, this project is the first project where I feel like I've really clicked with the people I work with just in terms of brainstorming. You know, you say one thing and they know where you're going with it. And these guys, I think that we work well together. And so this has given me a much greater appreciation for design projects and just, you know, it makes me look forward to doing this as a career. Because if I can work with people that understand me and I understand them and we're just driving towards a common goal, you know, that's satisfying, honestly. I think they're going to get to the point where I want them to be. The project won't be finished, and I didn't expect them to finish it. What I want them to do is to demonstrate to me a reliable, easy-to-construct mechanism that will push down those strings to create cords. And I think in three weeks they'll, they'll have that prototype finished. Doug and I are going to retake the class, work on the electronic interface, perfecting the mechanism, if there are any errors after we build it. Yeah. Um, so programming the Arduino and uh, figuring out, we're probably going to have to work with the, the client to figure out the, the human interface, right. like how the person's going to operate it. Thank <laughs> you.